Oh God! Borrowed a wife's car. Bloody hell! Don't tell her, but I've got it full of sweet shit. <laughs> the, ladies, the ladies are getting hungry, so we thought we'd make them some sugar syrup. It's down. What are we in autumn, sort of thing? Although you wouldn't think so. It's blooming hot. Well, that's not hot today, but it's been jolly hot. But our trees have stopped flowering, so we thought, well, we'll just give them a bit of sugar and just tickle them along a little bit. So we better unload this before I get caught. I'm going to be in all sorts of strife if she comes out. There's a bloody car full of ants, aren't I? Anyway, shh. We're filming this, oh my gosh, here we go. I don't want to know, should I? I'm on candid camera. What was that weird show, wasn't it? When, when you weren't supposed to know you were getting filmed? Anyway, I reckon I'm pretty safe. I don't think I spilt any sugar in the back of the car, so. The only downside to it is we can't eat now because I've bloody used the grocery money to buy that sugar, so I think I'm in all sorts of trouble. But anyway, so if you're actually out feeding your girls, it's usually this time of year, it's sort of one to one. So one kilogram of sugar to one litre of water. You can make it a lot thicker, but that's a bit later on. That's sort of the end of winter. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh hell, I nearly wore it. Oh, this is a big pot. Whew. So we're just making a rough calculation of how many kilojoules we've got here, and it's close to like 250,000 kilojoules. So blum and hell, I don't know. I reckon if we were drinking that, that'd be a heart attack in a saucepan, wouldn't it? My God. Mind you, you've got to remember there's a shitload of bees, so they might only get half a kilojoule each. So we've got to keep at this for a bit. Anyway, onward and upward. Stirring, 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 yay, yay, yay. Ah, oh dear, there you are. Trouble, trouble, toiling, bubble. Watch my cauldron bubble. Well, the ladies will be pleased to see me anyway in the morning. Here comes that man with a big pot of sugar. <laughs> Everybody's doing a little bit tough as far as nectar goes this year. That could get all very interesting. Some of it in the pot. Oh, come on. Bloody hell. Anyway, we just thought we'd show you my bit of rough open feeding that I've been designing. So here we go. What do they say? Don't try this at home. So do you like my flash workbench? No expense being here in the bush company. Good God. Anyway, there's gonna be my little treetop feeder so I can hang it in the tree and keep the, keep the ants away and let the girls in. So come along for a bit of a grinding ride. So we're just gonna cut a bit out 
you am going to leave my handle so I can tie it up and cut its head off. So, I do do. Is there an in instructable video for this one? I do think so. But there might be, you never know. Stranger things have happened. I picked these drums because they come with the natural fertilizer that we use on the orchard. And I thought, oh, that might be, this will work for this project. Probably not something you got laying around in your backyard. But anyway, we're going to show you what I'm up to. So my plan is I'm just going to cut it off and leave the handle and leave a little strap here. So we're going to make, we're going to make four cuts. So I can figure out where the, look at this. You wouldn't believe it. I even got a tape measure. Hell, I'm getting flash. How was half a 28? Any idea? 14. 14. Is it? Is that right? No, well, I don't like 14 because I'm going to go for 15. Okay, I'll do the right thing. I'll believe you. No, but not everybody would, you know. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Now we're going to go around there and make a bit of an incision. It's a bit like surgery. The young lad had some surgery. Hell, I wonder if I'd be as neat as your doctor. I like one of the comments was <laughs> like the fact that you go to the butcher's shop on the way home. <laughs> I thought that was... Oy, oy, oy. But of course, appendix can be a bit tricky to get to sometimes. Maybe hiding in all sorts of spots. Anyway, here's my very rough, rough pre pre surgery mark out. <laughs> so here we go. <laughs> drum, drum, drum. <laughs> <laughs> there we go, look at that! That's amazing! We'll just go over to the sink and give it a bit of a clean up. See if I can't trip over something. Oh dear, oh dear. Here at the wash station. Oh, okay. Fill it up through its actual hole. There we go. We'll just go over here to the actual X, X chucking out bit. Right, there you go. One prepared. Oh, onward and upward. Got myself a bit of string. I got well, it's a bit more like cotton rope. I got all fancy. I even found some. some I don't know. I think this was the drinker project that didn't. You never got to see because it didn't work. But anyway, this will be cool. Right, so my plan is, oh, lucky I did remember the corks, my plan is we've got some corks, this is one of, these corks are a pretty cool story, one of our, one of our fans got hold of me, my, one of my mates and girlfriends, and she said, hell, I got some bags of corks that I used to be at the Girl Guides, but how cool is that, there's a friggin' I don't know, she bought me yeah, 20 bags full of corks, which is bloody awesome, because they're hard to come by. Real cork. So, anyway, cheerio to you, Glenda. That'll do, I reckon. <laughs> That'll do. Was that movie, babe? That'll do, pig. Anyway, we might go and tie the rope together. Shit, after all that, where the hell did we do the pocket knife, champion? Did I put the pocket knife back in the actual car? <laughs> Maybe we'll have to have a work and be and someone can come help me clean up all my crap. <laughs> God. I have a pocket knife. <laughs> Just return it. Oh, I don't trust me. <laughs> have you been watching this show? I wouldn't lend me shit that you don't want back. Oh, where did it go? Come on. I'll take it back then. Okay. Then you won't get your shot then. Oh, I think that's a reluctant present. It looks a bit snazzy, doesn't it? It's that workforce. It's mine now. Oh, 
myself in four wheel drive. That looks like a bit of a tree. I reckon we'll go through there. Oh, hell, lad. If you're wondering why a bloke's hanging them in the tree, my theory is that I didn't want them to all get blooming full of ants. Well, that could be a bit of a problem. <laughs> Good one, though. You would have to pick one that's got a really small hole to get in. Yeah, tell you what. Oh, fuck it. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> oh, shit. Do myself an injury. <sighs> oh, come on, BA. <laughs> Right, we're coming out there's a little nut here. Then we'll just get our length right. I wonder if that's how they invent show rides and shit like that. <laughs> Think, well, that'll be fun. You imagine if you were a little person and you could hop in that tub. Hmm. There we go. Nice, that would be plenty. We'll go there. Oops. <laughs> Go on. I don't reckon this has even been out of this fancy little bag. It looks too bloody clean. Whew. At least it's a, it's a clean rope, so you'll be pleased to know. <laughs> and my plan is we'll tie that up there in a minute. We'll go and get some sugar. And if we don't get completely attached. So just wait there. Golly, gosh. I don't know, I don't think it makes a heavy water when you put sugar in it. <laughs> Maybe I'm just getting old. Goodness me. So we just tip our sugar in. Oh. The other day when I was down here full arsing around, I had a, I don't know, probably that much left in me pot, I suppose. And I thought, oh shit, and I ran out of feeders. And I had an old bucket in the back of the ute. And I thought, oh, that's good. I'll put some corks in the bucket and I'll bloody hook that up in the tree. Just as well a bloke isn't in any real big rush these days because I was there watching and it turns out that the bucket had a really great big crack in the bottom. So it was ripping its ass off. And I thought, well, that's going to be a bit non-productive. But the interesting thing is I had to take all the pollen out of my bucket, the other bucket, to put the liquid in because I had nowhere else for it to go. So <sighs> sometimes you should just go home with the sugar in your own pot and move on. And I don't know whether that's making any sense at all, but still, <laughs> check for cracks in your buckets if you're going to be open feeding. And we're going to leave it up a bit. Oh, that's heavy. <laughs> I really suck with the branch break, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, well, at least I'd be sweet. <laughs> right, yo. Now we just tie it up here. Cool. Awesome. So now all we got to do is wait for the ladies to find our sugar. And then they can have a feast on us. Lucky little girls. Oh. Oh. Phew, well, that looked pretty good. Now, just before we get too much further along on this project, the reason I can open feed out here in the scrub is because I'm miles from anybody and there's no other bees for, oh hell, I don't know, 20 Ks probably. So if you're in your backyard, and you haven't got a lot of resources, you can get a bottle feeder that you stick in your door of your hive. I don't really like these because you get a bit of spillage and the ants turn up and it causes all sorts of trouble. If you've got a bit more resource, you can get a cool Cirrusel top bar feeder thing. You just sit that on the top. You would have seen them before on one of the earlier episodes. Or you can get, oh, I think I brought one of them. Or you get something like this, which sits in your beehive and you have little feeder tubes and you fill that. And obviously, then you're only going to feed your bees because if you put an open feeder like this in in suburbia you're going to be feeding every bee for the next 10 k's and it's hell I actually i think some places it's not even legal to open feed because you'll end up maybe cross diseasing and stuff so yes just to reiterate if you're at home this is probably not for you <laughs> <laughs>